How are we going? Yay! Okay. <laughs> so, for an interesting, unique intro, okay? <laughs> Copyright. Okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so we're going to do a car chit chat catch up. I've been wanting to make this, but postponing it, procrastinating it. Plus I'm trying, kind of sort of trying to make and share content a little bit less and just live a quieter life. I love to journal and this is a way for me to journal. In a sense, it's a format to do so. But and I'm hunched like the hunchback. <laughs> um, but I don't know. Anyway, um, let's just do the talking thing. And I just did a little drive. I should have done the chit chat then the drive, depending on how, how bad I had to pee and I still have to pee kind of bad, but I am really close to my house and I'm in a church parking lot. <laughs> so I'm close to home. Plus everything in the town of Rexburg is very close, very near. And I covered basically all of town from one corner, one end to the other, you know, in the span of like 15 minutes, probably 10. And I don't even drive that fast. But anyway, um, don't know where I was going with that, <laughs> but I've just been wanting to share and I'm a person who will talk about things. I don't think I'm always all talk and no action, but I do talk and share and I'm not afraid to share things that I am excited about, things I look forward to. I'm not always going to wait until they happen, come true per se, but I do want to share this just so I can log it and journal it and maybe inspire and motivate anybody else who feels like they're in a similar scenario compared to me and that's basically how I feel really really stuck right now and I'm really trying to do an inventory on my self-awareness and my happiness and perspective and state of mind and contentment and I feel so stuck. Like, I'm in a small town. It's a college town. It's a Mormon town. It's BYU, Idaho. It's a small thing. They call it the family community for a reason because it's younger families or older people who are like established. The younger families, they're maybe just graduating or graduated, they're just starting out. They're young families or young couples, they're growing families, they're going to be moving on. And I'm here at home right now. I graduated. I don't have that young family. I'm definitely not wanting to stay here forever or permanently. I was thinking it might be long term because I didn't have another plan. I felt like I had no other option. There was no other way, shape or form in order for me to be successful in living my own life and Honestly, almost allowing my parents to hold my hand and lead and guide me for the rest of my days because I've been so stuck in my head, which is a really cooped up place to be, and it can be really unhealthy when you can't get out of your head and you let the anxiety rule your life. And my anxiety has been out of control, and lately, while I have been overcoming and initiating and doing and being more able and capable, like... I still let it control too much and it freaks me out and I psych myself out and I'm hard on myself for it and I'm harsh towards myself and I just want to live more peacefully and freely and honestly a way to do that is to get out of this crummy little town and I'm grateful for my time here. I really genuinely, sincerely, truly am. but. I think I've kind of outgrown it, and it's too small of a town, and this could be a quote, this is a thought I had, but for my growth, it's too small of a place and a life, it makes me feel too small for the life I want, for how much I want to grow, and I just feel so stuck, and so this inventory and self-reflection analysis of my life right now, present, future, little bit of past, but I've gotten over the past. I'm here now, I've survived everything. 
I am the me I am today because of the wants I want tomorrow because of the shit I went through yesterday, you know? So that's me. And we're probably almost out of battery. Okay, well, sorry. <laughs> Made you dizzy there, you know, roller coaster. Anyway, that's how I feel. I feel like I'm on a roller coaster, but just some updates and things to share. And again, just trying to maybe help by sharing. Plus, I can look back on this and I can compare, not compete with myself, who I was at this moment while I'm filming this compared to the future me days, whatever down the road when I look back at this, but I can kind of watch myself and be able to observe the perspective and mindset I was at at this very moment that I'm in right now. And I would be able to, this is not comfortable. Here we go. <laughs> I have slight scoliosis, so um, back pain starts young for me. But anyway, um, yeah, so I can just look back on this and I can see, hey, wow, this was where I was at. This is how I got here now. And then I can also think, like, did I make it? Did I get to that goal? Did I aim for it? Did I strive for it? Did I reach for it? Did I go for it? And I can see if I needed to, needed to, needed to, to. <laughs> I always say to. I don't know if it's an accent. It's to. I need to. Anyway, I need to. Um, <laughs> I lost my train of thought because of that. Uh, um, whatever. I guess where I'm going with this, what I'm trying to say, if I need to change my perspective or change my mind, it will manifest itself in this video. Like, if I look back on what I'm saying right now in the future, like future me looks back at me right now, I can say, okay, let's see how this all went down, where I was at right now, just talking about it, thinking things through, speaking my mind, whatever. So inventory on my life, okay? I've outgrown this place. I really have. And it's a college town and it's a Mormon town. It's a Mormon college. It's a church school and I went there for my parents plus it was cheap and it's for the most part pretty safe to be like it's a quieter place I mean stuff has gone on here we've been in the news there's been drama you know like we've been hurt and touched by darkness okay everywhere has in its own way but for the most part it's a very chill town I'm a pretty chill person yes I do have anxiety but I don't really like drama I don't like the craziness of life, I am a crazy person myself, but I don't mind a slow life. You know what I mean? But this is like dead and I'm outgrowing it. Like my friends, I've met five good, I have acquaintances outside of them, but five good solid close friends. There is my cousin as well who I'm really close to now. So she's tagging along there, you know, but she's like family, like extended family. But my five good college friends from here, two are graduated, one a while ago, one, now it's May, so April, a month ago, and then I have three here. One is an iffy friendship. It's complicated and confusing. Another one I'm pretty close to, but she has health concerns, so it's hard to hang out, and then another one is a guy friend, and I am not that social of a person. I have social anxiety, and I'm very introverted and independent. I don't need a lot of social to feel connection to those I'm close to, to those I love and adore and appreciate. I don't need a lot of interaction to feel like I've been social. Does that make sense? That's just my personality. I don't need a lot of social, but I need different social and my friends are going to be leaving. And my family's here. I have all my family, my immediate family, but one of my sisters who is out east and technically she's out there for good reason. And I'm not trying to hate on my family. I'm not trying to talk shit or anything or throw shade, whatever the quote, but like, my family's hard, and my parents are hardcore Mormon, and I announced years ago when I was in high school, and now I'm 25 and a half, okay, counting down the days till I'm old and 26 and on my own insurance, whatever, but anyway, like, I've told them, they know I want to leave the church, and I went to a church school for them, it was a family thing to go, I've kind of done my part, served my duty, served my time, whatever, and 
they have this dream for, for me. They want me to marry in the church to someone who's Mormon, continue in the church, raise a family in the church. It's all about the church. They're very spiritual. I'm spiritual too, but I don't like any church of any kind. That's just not me. Like, I believe in prayer, and my makeup's probably freaking freaking crazy. But I just like a life of chillness and calmness, like serenity and church brings me so much stress and pressure. I feel judged by people and they dress and talk so conservatively and they're kind of serious and judgmental. I feel like I can't be my full self, like my quirky, dorky, nerdy self. Like I kind of have to hide that. And I've been told that I'm pretty sweet and nice and kind. So like there's the quirky sweetness to me, but at church I really amp up the sweetness to try to cover up my weirdness a little bit. <laughs> That makes sense. Sounds so crazy saying it out loud like that. But what I'm trying to say is I can't be myself here. It's so Mormon here. And I have good Mormon friends, but my closest friends that I'm closest to, they're the really chill, laid back, like on the fence type of Mormon people or in my hometown. And I want to go back to Washington. That's what I'm going to talk about. But like some of my good friends, we still talk and I want to see them more and I want to see, see them again and I want to live near them. It's a perk if I move back in a number of ways, but I just, I can't be here anymore because what's it doing for me? Like, why am I here to impress my parents? I'm under the roof right now because I can't afford being on my own. I did tour the cheapest and cutest studio apartment here in town, and it's going to be expensive for me, even just me, even at the cheapest place here in town because I'm single technically. And I would be living on my own. I'd have to work two jobs like all the time as a para during the school year and then something full time in the summer, something part time after my school day shift at the job as a para during the school year nine months out of the year. Like it would be crazy. And for what? To live in a town close to home, which helps with my anxiety to ease into adulthood. But having to go to church, having to be judged for not going to church, like to disappoint my parents and their friends and whatever like I don't know and then there's Chris too and I've talked about this and I've talked about love and things and I want to and need to try try again or I will regret everything and it just feels right it feels wrong for me to be here and it feels right for me to leave I've told my friend Keely my cousin McKenna my sister Ashley those are the only three people who know about this aside from my little teeny tiny channel platform with you guys who are mostly strangers at this point even now um anyway okay we're still doing oops, we're still doing good for time <laughs> um but my bladder is upset with me I am gonna have to go soon thankfully my house is like right there but I just need to get out and it's about time that I realized this and I don't have to feel stuck I'm not in one place I'm not is the word stagnant? I don't have to stay put. I don't owe anybody anything. That sounds really bad, but at the same time, I've heard this is a time to be selfish. You can kind of spoil yourself because it is your life. And I am in my 20s, and I know like the 30s is easier technically because your, your 20s is like a hot mess. It's a catastrophe, disaster. It's just whatever. And I've really learned that. But I need to just do it. I can't ease into things. I can't be introduced to things. I just need to do it or else I never will. And I'll hold back and I'll step back from opportunities. And I just need to kind of like be thrown in there. My anxiety has improved and deep down I know I can do it. And I make things out to be so much scarier where I'm freaked out and I psych myself out all the time and I just prepare for the worst. And I never even really hope for the best. I'm just setting myself up for, excuse me, for, um, for failure, as in, like, I tell myself, gotta stay home, gotta stay close to home, can't leave the house much, can't disappoint my parents, etc., etc. I need to just do it for me, because that's healthy, and it will make me happy, and feel okay, and content, and fulfilled. And another thing is, I'm going off of my meds. I don't know if you can tell, I don't know if I seem off, I do feel different, and I was worried that I would feel either the exact same or too different. 
like maybe my meds weren't doing anything or maybe they're doing too much and I'm addicted on either end of the spectrum either way but so far I feel less mania and I feel more contentment more me instead of a craziness in my mind where I'm up and down right now with the depression I'm like content or kind of flat and then I dip into a sadness a low and then I come back up to contentment and I'm grateful for that compared to the mania that the mood meds had provided that would slip and slide and go everywhere from mania to depression up and down throughout the day and I do miss the mania I do but I'm trying to get lower on these doses. I'm going to see if I can get off of them. And someone close to me, someone I love, has told me this was a long time ago. And I'm finally deciding to act on it and take it more seriously. Except for I did start the ADD and ADHD meds thing in December. Got off in December, by December. Um, don't take ADHD meds anymore. I've been on them on and off for years since I was in high school. Like a freshman, that was the first medication I've ever been on. And I'm off of that and I'm gaining weight. So I'm seeing progress and positives in that. And the results of this so far, the progress in the journey with my medication, with trying to go off of them, it's been a good thing. At first I hated it because I was like, well, now I'm just me and there's no mania in me. Like it's not mixed in or mixed up with my personality, but now it's better. I feel like it's getting better as I get lower on the doses. And so see my doctor again in June, just clarify some things with him, share some things with him, and I'll just see what happens and see how it goes. And this is a thought I had, like, yes, I will disappoint people and my parents. And it will be totally polar opposite where I'm relying on my family and getting help with my anxiety to living a life. I wanna go back to my hometown Idaho is way more conservative, it's cheaper. Washington, where I'm from, the southeast area, it's really shot up in price, but I think it's an atmosphere that I would do better in, if that makes sense. Because I, I can't be fake or forced anymore, and I don't leave my house that much. It's not anxiety-based as much as it, as it is control-based. I just get questions when I leave the house, before and after and I'm 25. I'm not allowed to go and visit my hometown. Um, they know that my ex-boyfriend is there. They don't really like him. Um, the thing is, we've always been on good terms. We've been talking more and we're making plans and trying to figure things out. I keep like slurring my words together. Sorry, I'm tired, but um, I'll have to go here pretty soon. But what I'm trying to say is I'm going to disappoint them because that means I'll be like living with someone or living away from home. I'm not going to be going to church anymore. I didn't get married first. Like they, they want a certain me that I don't want for me. The version of me that they want isn't who I want to be. And I hate disappointing people and I'm a people pleaser and I've been led to become that way. I've been raised and taught to be that way. To put other people first and myself last and everything. I have to be polite even if people run me over. I have to do what my parents say even if I don't want to. If it goes against what I want, still have to do it anyway to impress them. But I can't do that for the rest of my life. I can't live a lie. I can't live a life I don't want. And I think this summer will be the last summer living at home because before the new school year starts, by the end of the summer, after family reunions and trips and things, after that family time, I think I need to go. It's time for me to go and I need to get out and move away. And it's so complicated with my family. Just they're so uptight and they are good people, but they're very hard on me. And I just need to get out. So whatever it is in your life, if you're struggling with the people around you, if you love them and they love you, that's great. But if that love and it's hard this way. If that love is mixed in with guilt trips and almost like blackmail, like perspective blackmail, um, you need to keep your distance. You can still love them and you can still know that they love you, but it's a different kind of love where it's toxic and manipulative. 
and I just need space. That's what my sister did. She got space, and I need to do that for myself to live my own life, and I'm not wanting to miss out on what I want anymore, and so I don't know how to end this. I don't know how to end this conversation because that's weird. This is weird to talk about, and it's kind of sad to talk about. I don't know. So on that note, um, I'm just needing to <laughs> needing to turn the camera off because it's gonna die. But I'm needing to just do this. Just needing to figure it out, and I need to try it, or I'm never gonna know. Never gonna know if it's gonna work out with him and us between us. I'm never going to know if I can live on my own, live away in a different state on my own, be independent, do my own thing, be myself, work on financial security, stability, being more emotionally stable and able, whatever. Just working on me for me. No one in the way, no one telling me what to do. And I'm an adult. I've been an adult for a long time, but I haven't ever been treated like one. And I'm the only one who's going to be allowed to treat myself like one. As in, I need to move out and leave and get my space. So, I'll update you guys later. You will see if this happens, obviously, because this is my channel and I share my life. But I needed to talk about these things, and I'm glad that I did. I'm glad, I'm glad I got it off my chest. But Anyway, um, I'm grateful. <laughs> On that note, I am grateful for my life. It's just it's complicated, and it's chaotic, and it's messy, and it's crazy. But, grateful for you guys. Thanks for listening and being here, and I will talk later.